Before starting the video, click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Hello and welcome to House of Commerce. Hope you all are doing well. So today's content of lecture is join in by product. So in this we shall learn what is join product, what is by product and we shall solve the questions by all the methods of calculating the joint cost and the uh, cost of by product. So stay tuned and watch till end. First let us define what is joint product. Joint product means two or more products produced simultaneously by the same process up to the split of point. Each product has a significant relative sales value. Means each and every joint product is not necessarily sold at the same value. Then joint products are so related to each other such that the increase in the output of one increases the output of another although not necessarily the same ratio means for producing one joint product you need to allocate more material and for producing the other one you need to allocate less material than the first one now the key points to note is direct material direct labor and overheads cost incurred up to the initial split of value the split of point are joint cost and that can be allocated to the final product only in some arbitrary manners means which are decided prior to starting the product that how much should be allocated to which product now let us take a look on joint production process suppose we have a material potatoes and those potatoes while being in process there will be a split of point that when we have to decide the what should be made by the help of these potatoes now we have two products two joint products which can be made by the help of potatoes chips and price now the company has to decide at the split of point that how much potatoes should be allocated to the chips and how much should be allocated to the fries now let us see the distinction between join and buy product firstly joint product means that the product which is intended to be made by the material then the by product is a product which is made by the scrap of that material means if you take the sugarcane scrap and you make the chipboards by it so this is a byproduct of the sugarcane but officially you have to make the products like sugar and alcohol and such things by the help of sugarcane but that chipboards are made by the help of scrap of that sugarcane and the joint product has more value than the byproduct because it contains the real material and byproduct is made by the scrap so it is obvious that joint product will have more sales value than the byproduct now there are two approaches on allocating the joint cost number one is to allocate the cost on the physical balance then to allocate the cost on market basis now let us see the first method physical measure method this is the method by which the joint cost is allocated on the basis of relative weight volume other physical measures of at the split of point and total production of the product during the accounting period each product is assumed to receive the similar benefits from the joint cost here the similar benefit means the similar level of product and similar level of cost and not equal cost so this is to bring into the knowledge that not to allocate at the equal cost then the cost per unit is same for each of the product now let us see the physical balance method with the help of an example we have a joint cost of 60,000 then we have output and sales product X 4,000 units at selling price of 7.5 then Y 
2000 at the selling price of 25 then we have product Z 6000 at the selling price of 3.33 now let us divide this joint cost of 60,000 to the product X Y and Z now here we have the total of 4 plus 2 plus 6 equal to 12,000 now we'll make the ratio of this 4,000 divided by 12 so we have a ratio of 1 over 3 then 2,000 divided by 12 1 over 6 then 6,000 divided by 12 1 over 2 now let's apportion the cost into the products this 60,000 by multiplying with 1 over 3 it shall give 20,000 by multiplying with 1 over 6 it shall give 10,000 and by multiplying with 1 over 2 it shall give 30,000 now we have the sales value 4 into 7.5 30,000 2 into 25 50,000 and 6 into 3.33 20,000 now by deducting the sale with cost we shall get the profits and that's the production the joint cost allocation with the help of physical balance method then on number second we have sales value method in sales value method you have to apportion the cost joint cost with the help of sales value at this split of point now let us see with the help of example the how to divide this now we have the same question joint cost of 60,000 output and sales uh, product X 4,000 into 7.5 at selling price of 7.5 then product Y 2,000 at the selling price of 25 then product Z 6,000 units of 3.33 so how to divide the cost first we have to take the sales value so 4,000 into 7.5 will get 30,000 then 2,000 into 25 50,000 then 6,000 into 3.33 20,000 now we have a total value sales value of 100,000 now let us take the ratio that this 30,000 is 30% 30 of the total sales value this 50,000 is 50% 50 of 100,000 and this 20,000 is 20% 20 of 100,000 so this 60,000 shall be apportioned to this percentage so product X will get 18,000 out of this 60 product Y will get 30,000 out of this 60 and product Z will get 12,000 out of this 60 now let's have the profit or loss so 30,000 minus 18 12,000 shall be profit 15 minus 30 20,000 20,000 minus 12 8,000 shall be the profit so total profit of the company shall be 40,000 now this was all by sales value matter now let us see the next one then a number third net realizable value matter now what is net realizable value while discussing the financial accounting we have discussed it in the inventory that net realizable value means sales minus cost to sell so if there is a further processing cost and there is a sales value as well so you have to deduct the further processing cost from the sales value and you'll get the NRV and you shall divide you shall allocate the joint cost according to that NRV now suppose that we have a sales value of 36 60 and 24 and we have a further processing cost of 8 10 and 2 now what shall be the NRV sales minus further processing cost so NRV shall be 28,000 50,000 and 22,000 now this 28,000 is 20% 20 of 100,000 means the total and this 50,000 is 50% 50 of the total this 22,000 is 22% 22 of the total cost total NRV so we shall divide the joint cost according to this percentage now 
Now let us take a look on byproducts in detail. When two or more different products are produced, any product that does not have a substantial sales value is called byproduct. Byproduct are outputs from a joint processes that are relatively minor in quantity or value. So we have discussed it before that whatever the scrap is left over, the byproduct is produced by that scrap. A byproduct has a small relative value to the joint products, but it may have some value. The proceeds of sale of the byproduct can be treated in a number of ways, and the method chosen has an implication for how the byproduct is measured in the joint process account. Now, let us see a question that what can be the treatment of byproduct? So, we have a question. During March, 9,000 units of the material were input into the process. Total cost of the processing direct material and conversion cost were, was 135,880. The output was 5,000 units of joint product 1 and 3,000 units of joint product 2 and 1,000 units of byproduct BP3. Now joint product 1 has a sales value of 40 per unit when it was output from the process and can be sold for 120 per unit after the further processing cost of 25 per unit. JP2 has a sales value of 55 per unit when it is, out, uh, when it is output from the process and can be sold for 80 per unit after the further processing cost of 15 per unit. BP3 byproduct 3 has a sales value of 1.58 per unit. Now let us see the solution of this. Now here we have the solution that total process cost is 135,880. We have taken this from here. Now what to do with the joint product cost, byproduct cost? All you have to do is to deduct it from the total processing cost. So the byproduct units were 1000 and you shall multiply it by this sale price given at last 1.58 per unit. So you shall put it here and you shall deduct it from the total processing cost and you will get 134,300. Now you shall get the NRV and divide the pr uh, processing cost according to that. So what shall be the NRV? First we have to take the units of this, then both of the products units and then the NRV. So what shall be the NRV? Sale price minus further processing cost. So 120 minus 25 then the selling price minus the further processing cost so 80 minus 15. So we have got the NRV of both of this and the total is 670. Now we will make the ratio of this. So how would you make the ratio? 475 divided by the total then 195 divided by total 670. So now you have the process cost and you shall divide it accordingly with this ratio and the joint cost is divided among JP1 and JP2 and the total is the total processing cost 134,300. Now you can put the byproduct in the same way that you have to deduct its selling price from every method which you have done before in distributing the joint cost among the joint products. Now that's all for today's lecture. If you have any question regarding today's lecture, you can put your question into the comment section and that shall be answered into the next videos. Till then, good luck.